Hello, friends, and welcome to another fun-filled episode of Syracuse Sports, presented by Krause Health, the exclusive healthcare partner for SU Athletics. Brent Axe, Emily Liker, back with you, the never-ending offseason for Syracuse football. And I mean that in a good way. I mean, the news keeps coming fast and furious, and one thing we're going to do for you today, Emily and I got to know Jeff Nixon, the new offensive coordinator for Syracuse football, had a great conversation with him. You're going to hear that shortly, and hopefully we answer a lot of uh, your questions about uh, just what he's got up his sleeve in terms of what the Syracuse football offense is going to be. We know we've heard it described as pro style and 12 personnel and some of these football terms that are out there, and you know, Jeff getting to into the community and getting to know Syracuse and uh, we covered a lot of ground with him. So looking forward to you hearing that conversation coming up and Emily, I got to thank our uh, Syracuse sports insiders for offering up a lot of great questions and suggestions for what we should ask Jeff. We definitely used a a bunch of your suggestions and we would love for you to become a Syracuse sports insider by texting the word orange to three, one, five, eight, four, seven, three, eight, nine, five. You can try it free for two weeks. I text you, you text me, news, information, opinion, questions. We were doing this podcast today. I sent a text to our Syracuse Sports Insiders to say, what do you guys want to know? We're talking to Jeff Nixon. Give us some questions. Give us some things that you want to know about the Syracuse football offense. So thanks to our Syracuse Sports Insiders, as always. Emily, before we uh, present that interview to the great listeners and viewers of this show, been a few things popping here on the Syracuse football front. What's uh, it's kind of caught your attention lately in, in the offseason where everything's happening? Yeah, well, obviously the big news this week um, on Monday, we found out that Damian Alford was dismissed from the team. Um, Alford was the leading receiver last season. Uh, I believe it stat line was 33 catches, 610 yards, couple touchdowns in there. Um, certainly a surprise. Prize and it, it got a little messy for a couple hours just in some of the verbiage that was used to assess the situation. Um, but it, it was a dismissal. My understanding is it wasn't, um, it wasn't like a punitive dismissal, he wasn't like in trouble or like any of that stuff, from my understanding. Um, but whatever went down, dismissal was the correct way to address the situation. I confirmed that with a team spokesman, so you know. It's certainly a loss for the Orange. Alfred had some very big plays and very big moments. I think there were some frustrating moments for Syracuse with him last year, um, whether that just be because he was obviously being uh, covered more heavily as the leading receiver or or whatnot. Um, But there were some moments where he just wasn't delivering some games where there was like hardly any uh, participation participation from him, it felt like. So it's a loss. And and they didn't have a quarterback for – you know, right, a yes. good portion yeah. of, of the season, right? I mean, the Dan Valari, LaQuint Allen, uh, anybody else they wanted to throw in their experiment certainly factors into that, but they, they literally couldn't throw the ball, wouldn't throw the ball for a while. So if I was Alford, I'd, I'd be pretty frustrated myself. Right, yeah. So it's a loss, but I think one thing that I wanted to kind of use this time to talk about that I couldn't figure out like a way to address properly on Twitter is like, I saw a lot of people like, oh, they're going to, they're just going to go in the portal and pick someone else up. And well, yes, like technically that could happen. I think just from what we're seeing of the roster construction right now and who they've already picked up, I would be like very surprised if they went out and tried to get like a one-to-one replacement for Alfred in the next portal window, just because they don't, they have too many guys on scholarship right now. Like, I don't know the exact number, but they're like five or six over scholarship, I think. And so the spring is going to be about cutting people. It's not going to be about replacing people they've cut because they've already, they went over the limit now so that when spring comes, they can cut back and be right in the spot they need to. Um, the spring, the, the second portal window doesn't often have as much talent in it anyway, just because guys have gone through spring ball at that point. Like they know where they're going to be. So for those like who are like, oh, we're gonna, we're just going to replace Alford. Alford's already been replaced by the right. people they've already picked up. That's, that's a great that's point. That's what it comes down to. And Alford, I think, noted there were some deleted tweets and some things. You wrote about it on Syracuse.com that he wanted to graduate and then mm-hmm. make a decision about football. I'm not trying to speculate here. This is just me opining on it. But if I'm Fran Brown, knowing I'm over scholarships, knowing I have somebody that's not quite committed, maybe you just – and Fran's been pretty blunt with some guys. 
about where they stand and what the situation is. Maybe you say, maybe it's just best for everybody if you, if you move on, if that's the case. You mentioned it. The next portal window opens. Correct me if I'm wrong on my dates here, Emily, from April 16th to the 30th, right? Yeah, that's right. So mm-hmm. that's right around graduation time. And maybe Damian can look around. He'll certainly get some interest. I mean, you're talking about a big target who can make plays. He'll be playing college football somewhere next year. But you noted it, like the between the players they added in the portal, a few that are coming in recruiting-wise, you're going to hear Jeff Nixon shortly talk about this offense. Like, I'm not trying to brush aside Alford here. It's a loss, but they've got some dudes in, in that mm-hmm. wide receiver room. Gatson coming back. Of course, he's got to be healthy. That's a tricky injury he's coming back from. But I don't feel like there, – some losses are bigger than others, and I feel like all told – from a football standpoint, it's one you can absorb if you're Fran Brown and Jeff Nixon in this offense. Definitely. Um, I think the other big thing and kind of goes with loss is Khalil Ahmad, um, Mm. one of the personnel and recruiting staffers we found out left was, was all like, we don't really know what, what happened there. Um, He tweeted, I believe, Two, it will have been two Fridays ago when when this airs and people are listening to this um, that he was not with the program anymore and that kind of left it at that. What's interesting is that tweet is now deleted, um, but last week it came out that he's returning to Penn State, which is where he spent the 2023 season. So something, someone to replace in, in the recruiting and personnel department, we're kind of still, I think, learning the full scope of all of Brown's hires. So like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know like exactly what the recruiting and personnel staff looks like right now and whether they will need to bring someone else in there or even if they want to, but they lost a mod and he is, he is a well-known name for Northeast recruiting and New Jersey recruiting. So that is a loss for them. That's it. And it was kind of a coup to get him from Penn state. And I remember somebody sending me a clip from, it was a Penn state podcast and they were like freaking out that he came to Syracuse and, you know, Fran was making all these gains in in recruiting in the Northeast and certainly knows the Northeast with his New Jersey connections and everything. And look, sometimes things just don't work out. And I'm sorry that Emily and I don't have more information for you. I have not heard anything as to the reasoning why at this point, Sometimes things just don't work out. Uh, People, you know, it sounds good. You go to a new job, you don't mesh. Maybe you you miss the old place. Penn State certainly took a back. You mentioned it, Emily. He's got a strong reputation. I think it would have been certainly something great for Syracuse to have him around for a while. I think he was involved with when they were doing the Lamborghinis and the hibachi dinners and and everything. And that was great. And it put a little Mm -hmm. oomph into that that short recruiting window they had when Fran took over in early December for that first signing day in late December. But given the reputation Fran has as a recruiter and Nick Williams has and Elijah Robinson and the list goes on, I feel like you can go get somebody if they even do replace that position, right? So that was strange. It was abrupt. You mentioned he deleted the tweet. So look, I don't want to get into a world of speculation here, but He went back to Penn State, and you kind of turn the page and see where you go from there. And recruiting is is that wheel that never stops spinning. Uh, The the uh, how can I how can I put this, Emily? It's I I think of signing day now. It's almost like the sad trombone, you know, because it's not even signing day anymore. It It was a very quiet signing day for Syracuse. They did add a receiver from New Jersey which was a surprise who apparently can run like the wind running four, four forties and a track star and another Jersey guy there. So a little surprise in the receiver room there, but it was pretty quiet there. We now know spring football starts March 21st, the spring football game. And what a day this is going to be, by the way, April 20th, you've got Syracuse, Virginia lacrosse, which is going to be a big game. They're going to retire Paul Gates Jersey that day yeah. and the spring game, which I think there's more interest. And I think this will be the most well-attended spring game perhaps ever given the, the fever pitch and, and people just into this combine that with a great lacrosse game, like X out April 20th on your calendar, friends, that is going to be a heck of a day at the dome. So we're getting there. Like it feels like a long time away, Emily, but the way this off season is gone. And before you know it, we're going to be doing our spring football preview podcast. Right. Yeah. It, it always kind of feels like the, the regular season runs actually through the end of January. 
And then you hit signing day and you like think in your head like, oh, signing day should be this big deal. But again, it's it's not anymore because everyone signs on early signing day. And so then February is just kind of this knock on wood. <laughs> I better find some wood to knock on. Quiet <laughs> month with no it. news. I got you. Um, and then, yeah, you get out of February and it's like, oh, wow, spring football's here. And then you have spring football for a month. And then next thing you know, you blink your eyes and August is there and you're at fall camp. So just barrels along, just keeps going. Rock and roll, friends. Busy times. More uh, interest in football in the offseason than, than, frankly, I've ever seen. Lacrosse humming along, of course, basketball. So much uh, to cover here on Syracuse Sports. But we're going to put the focus today on a conversation with the new offensive coordinator for Syracuse football, came to Syracuse from the New York Giants. Yes, there is a Tommy Cutlet's discussion coming up. We didn't uh, shortchange you there, friends. But on the Syracuse offense and why he – we're seeing a, a real outlet here from pl- people that want to go from college to the NFL, right? Jeff Halfley from Boston College just takes the defensive coordinator job at Green Bay. Bill O'Brien went the other way and came back to college. But it's interesting that Jeff Nixon – came from the NFL to college football. Why did he do that? What was the message from Fran Brown and so much more? Let's take a listen to our conversation with Jeff Nixon, the new Syracuse football offensive coordinator. And a pleasure to be joined by the new offensive coordinator for Syracuse football who arrives here via the New York football giants. Jeff Nixon joining us here on Syracuse Sports with Brent Axe and Emily Liker. Jeff, thanks for coming on. Welcome to Syracuse and how are you, sir? Uh, it's a it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, you know, really excited, uh, you know, about the opportunity to talk to Syracuse Nation a little bit. And uh, it's been a great first uh, month on the job, and uh, you know, really excited about the uh, you know the direction of Syracuse football under you know our new head coach uh, Fran Brown, and uh, you know, just really excited about everything we have going on here. Jeff, I know you have a little experience with Fran in the past, work with him at Baylor, and you are in an interesting situation because. Fran was kind of recruiting you while you were serving out your last month there with the New York football giants. But what was it about Syracuse and Fran Brown that wanted you uh, to take this job? Uh, it was just, just the opportunity to, you know, coach with Fran, you know, we got to know each other at uh, Baylor in 2017 and 2018. And, you know, I've just uh, really admired his career path uh, of, you know, being able to, always coach at a high level and everywhere he's been, you know, whether it's, it was Temple, uh, uh, Rutgers, uh, Baylor, and then uh, obviously, you know, won a couple of national championships at Georgia, you know, just to have an opportunity to be a part of his staff. Uh, you know, I just had to jump at the opportunity and I've always been a huge fan of Syracuse uh, University. Uh, my mentor, uh, George DeLeon was a longtime offensive coordinator here. Uh, uh, you know, under uh, Coach uh, Pascaloni, and I've had the pleasure of coaching with George at uh, three different places: at Temple, at Baylor, and with the Miami Dolphins. And then, uh, fortunate to coach with uh, Coach Pascaloni uh, about a year and a half ago with the Carolina Panthers. So, uh, I realize all the great history here. Uh, you know, in Syracuse football. Uh, I'm an old Big East guy myself. I started off my college career at West Virginia. And actually, my first college game I ever went to, it was West Virginia versus uh, Syracuse down in uh, Morgantown. Uh, oh, wow. Back in the day. And then played here in 1993 when I was at West Virginia before uh, transferring uh, to uh, Penn State. Uh, but uh, fond memories of Syracuse, just such a rich uh, football history here, you know, with all the great players, uh, you know, from Donovan McNabb, who had a pleasure of being part of the Philadelphia Eagles staff for four years when he was a quarterback there. Uh, obviously the legendary Jim Brown. You know, I grew up, uh, my dad's from Akron. I grew up a uh, Cleveland Browns fan. So uh, uh, Jim Brown is, you know, with, you know, with the Cleveland Browns, I mean, he's, he's the man, you know, so uh, just so many great players here and, you know, such a, a rich football tradition. And, you know, it's going to, it's going to be exciting here to, uh, you know, to be the offensive coordinator and to be a part of this program. 
besides obviously this kind of history that you have known and, and been a part of um, and all these connections that you have, I guess, what was Fran's kind of pitch to get you to move from the NFL back down to the college level? Because I feel like increasingly we're seeing kind of the opposite where college coaches are wanting to leave and get into the NFL and get out of some of the uh, off the field stuff that you have to deal with in college football now. Uh, he really didn't have to, you know, he really didn't have to give me a sales pitch. Like I said, I, I was excited that he thought of me, uh, you know, to be his, uh, uh, you know, offense coordinator and, you know, in his inaugural year here, you know, at, at Syracuse. Uh, I really enjoy, I've been fortunate throughout my career, you know, 15 years in the NFL. Uh, this will be my uh, 13th year at the collegiate level, you know, so I've kind of done both. Uh, I love both levels. Uh, I love working with with young uh, men and trying to help them develop uh, in any way I can, you know, whether it's off the field or to be the best football players they can be. So I was just excited to uh, get a chance to uh, coordinate the offense for them and, uh, you know, be able to uh, be an offense coordinator in a great conference like the ACC and and, uh, have a little bit of unfinished business. You know, we're at Baylor, you know, we made it to the, we made it to the Sugar Bowl and almost made it to the Final Four. Uh, we were really close, so uh, in my mind, like you know, kind of got a little bit of unfinished business, man. So I hope, you know, we can, you know, get Baylor to the, I mean, get Syracuse to the point where, you know, we can make some noise and, you know, get into the, you know, college football playoff eventually and have a chance to win it all. You know, so that's the goal. Jeff, when Fran took over, he mentioned that he had a letter from George DeLeon. He keeps it in his office, and it's something that's very special to him. Do you have a, a lesson or two that you really carry with you in, in working with George so often? Oh, uh, man, I, he, he is just such a dear friend of mine. Uh, one thing I, you know, I will say, like, i very fortunate, you know, before he passed away, uh, you know, a year and a half ago, my daughter actually uh, played soccer and had a tournament down uh, – in Tampa, you know, where he, you know, where he was retired at in Sarasota. So I got a chance to spend about a week and a half with George, you know, probably about five or six months before uh, he, he, he passed, but just such a genuine, great guy, uh, fabulous football coach, you know, hardest work I've ever been around, you know, someone that was just smart, tough, dependable. Uh, you know, you could, you could depend on George to do, anything you asked him to do. And, you know, he just had such a great wealth of uh, football knowledge and my kids really enjoyed being around him. He had a great <laughs> sense of humor. Uh, he was always good with, uh, you know, my, my, my kids when they were younger, uh, uh, you know, just, just a great genuine dude, you know, per- uh, great person, uh, somebody I really look up to and, uh, you know, been very fortunate enough to have him in my life, uh, you know, during my coaching journey. I think we'll get into kind of more football nitty gritty in a minute, but I want to start with like the personnel that you're coming in and getting to work with now, specifically Aronde Gadsden has kind of been the star of this offense the past two years was injured this past season, but what was your role? I guess if you had one in getting him to stay with the program for another year and just what have you seen out of him so far and how's he doing in his recovery? Uh, Aronde, he, he's locked in. I mean, he's locked in. I mean, he's going to, you know, we're expecting him to have a, a huge year for us. And he's, he's, uh, don't really like to talk about injuries and, you know, so, you know, with our guys, you know, but, but he's doing really well. Uh, you know, he's, 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 he's close to being full speed. Like he's, he's doing really well, you know, with his rehab and, uh, man, what a, what a, what a good guy to have on, you know, as an offensive coordinator, uh, on your side, you know, uh, really talented, uh, Fortunate, you know, I've worked with the Miami Dolphins for five years. So actually his dad is a coach and he actually interned for us when, uh, you know, obviously was a great, his dad was a great player for the Miami Dolphins and, you know, still lives in plantation, you know, right next, he used to live right next to the facility. He interned for us. So uh, myself, you know, coach uh, Fran, you know, we kind of had a, you know, a little bit of relationship with his dad, which I think helped uh, in him trusting us and, uh, knowing that, you know, we're going to have his best interest in mind and, you know, we want to have him go out and have a huge uh, senior year for us. So, you know, we have, we have big plans for him. 
Jeff, we've seen a lot of additions in the wide receiver room through the transfer portal and, of course, uh, recruiting and some players that will arrive in the fall and, and a few that are already here. We've seen some subtractions as well. Uh, Damian Alford was the leading receiver on the team a year ago. Uh, he is is going to move on here. Uh, could you shine any light on that and why ultimately maybe things didn't work out with, with Alford returning for another season? No, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, in college football these days, it's a, it's a crazy world, you know, with the – you know, with the transfer portal and, uh, uh, you know, guys getting a chance to, you know, maybe see that they have a, you know, better opportunity somewhere else in their opinion. Uh, uh, but Damon, he was doing a nice job when he was here, you know, obviously he, he decided to move on, you know, that was kind of, you know, uh, kind of his choice, but we, you know, we're excited about the guys we have here. I think we have a lot of talent in our, uh, our, our skill positions on offense and, you know, with the addition of some of the, the, the freshmen who are coming in and some of the guys who transferred in for us, uh, I think we're going to be we're going to be really good at the receiver position, you know, as long as the guys keep developing like they are this offseason and that we stay healthy, of course. Who are some specific guys that have stood out to you in that receiving core or maybe at other spots on offense so far? Uh, there's, it, it'd be difficult to say because I think we have a lot of talent. I, I really do. Uh, you know, one particular guy, obviously, is Kyle McCord, you know, you know, coming in from Ohio State. I think he's done a great job so far of, uh, uh, of trying to take a leadership role. You know, he's a guy who's played a lot of football, who uh, is, you know, going into his fourth year. And, you know, I think he's doing a really good job as, as far as, you know, trying to be a leader, uh, coming in new, you know, learning everybody's name and, you know, all the different people here. You know, within our program, I think he's done a nice job. I think he kind of, you know, stands out in that aspect. Uh, but we got really good players, I think, at, at, at the skill positions here. You know, again, we just got to stay healthy and they got to develop. They got to learn a new system. And, you know, we got a long way to go before the season starts. You know, a lot of championships are, are won in the offseason. So, you know, our guys are working extremely hard. You know, our staff is working hard. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to uh, – uh, develop that that off-season championship pedigree that's going to help us win during the season. Jeff, you mentioned learning the system, and, you know, in football we hear terms, you know, pro-style offense and 12 personnel and, and all these things that get thrown around. What what can you tell us about what kind of offense you want to run? We know Kyle's the quarterback, and, you know, we've seen in recent years at Syracuse there's been a lot of mobile quarterbacks that the Orange have had. Maybe Kyle doesn't fit that profile. Certainly he can get out of the pocket when necessary, but – how would you describe what you want your offense to be, not only with Kyle in, in place, but kind of how you look at it and, and adapt either based on the players you have or the system you want to run? It's funny. I've been, I've been asked that question a lot by a lot of different people. <laughs> uh, we all want to know, Jeff. Describe, the best way I can describe it is, I mean, we, we, it's, it's going to be an offensive system that, you know, we're going to be able to attack our opponents, you know, on a weekly basis, whether it's, you know, throwing the ball 50 times one particular week or running the ball 50 times uh, uh, a particular week, you know, depending on our, our opponent's strength and weaknesses. So, you know, we, we're going to try to run a balanced attack. You know, we feel we have linemen who can block and, and pass protect. And, you know, we got a thousand yard uh, rusher coming back. Uh, you know, so, you know, I think we're going to be able to, you know, have some balance on offense and uh, run the football and, you know, with our, with our, really good skill wide receivers and with Kyle quarterback, you know, we should be able to throw it. So we're going to have an offense. But we're going to have enough in where, again, we can attack our opponents on a weekly basis and, and do either one, whether it's, it's, it's throwing the ball or passing the ball 50 times a game, you know, whatever it takes for that particular week. You mentioned returning a 1,000 yard rusher in LaQuinn Allen. Obviously, you are very experienced at the running back position and have coached some of the the biggest names in the in the league at the, that position right now. Just what do you think LaQuinn Allen can can benefit kind of from your expertise and maybe how do you see him growing over this next season into a player that can go on to the league in the future? Really, really excited about uh, uh, LaQuinn. I Man, really like his off season preparation right now. His attitude. Uh, his work ethic, uh, his talent, you know, the sky's the limit for him. You know, uh, I think you know, right now in the offseason, you know, we're emphasizing, you know, getting a little bit bigger, you know, getting a little bit stronger. Uh, that's only going to help his his game in both running the bo football and, you know, protecting the passers. So, you know, he is a complete three down back. 
Uh, you know, so we're just going to work on, you know, again, getting them a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, uh, uh, getting him a little bit better in all three phases of his game. And again, I'm looking for him to have a huge year for us, uh, you know, along with some of our other running backs who I think are doing a nice job uh, this, this off season. I think we're going to have a, a really good running back room. Jeff, I always like to ask uh, coaches that, that come in to Syracuse this in building your offense and, and evaluating your talent and, and everything we're discussing here. When you have a dome six or seven times a year, how does that factor into what kind of offense you want to run? Uh, for me, I, I I really haven't thought about like, well, okay, we're going to do this because we play in a dome. Uh, uh, maybe I should, but it, I really just has not come into uh, has not come into play. Uh, like I said, I think we're going to run an offensive style where. Uh, uh, you know, we're going to challenge defenses because, you know, we're going to we're going to have a balanced attack. You know, like I said, we're going to be able to uh, uh, I'd be very disappointed, you know, if we weren't able to run the ball effectively. And I'd be very disappointed if we weren't able to to throw it effectively. You know, uh, was blessed at Baylor. You know, we had a we had a good football team. You know, all three, all three, for instance, all three of our wide receivers got drafted in the top three rounds. And then all of our running backs right now are playing in the NFL. And. You know, so, you know, we were we had a system where, again, we could throw the ball, we could run it, you know, uh, you know, just based off of our opponents. And, you know, we, we could spread it out to our skill guys and allow them all to have success. And uh, that's what we're hoping to do here at, at uh, Syracuse. And Jeff, just a quick follow up on that. Emily knows my bias on this. Our listeners certainly know my bias on this. So I've got to ask. Are we going to throw the ball to the tight end? Because it's it's kind of something I'm obsessed with. But look, look at football. Look at Travis Kelsey and George Kittle, and you can rattle off the names here and how that position has evolved. And let's just say I've been a little frustrated. We have not seen enough of that. I mean, Dan Villari on the roster. You got Jamie Trimble. You know, right. Aronde is technically a tight end, right? Like I'm looking, like okay, we got some guys here. Let's let's see some throws to the tight end. We going to get it this year, Jeff, or what are we thinking? We will. We will All for right. sure. Like you said, uh, All right. like, like you mentioned Dan Villari, like really excited about him. I mean, he's such an athletic guy. Uh, uh, you know, now I think he's really um, feeling good about, you know, where he is as far as learning the tight end position, you know, being an inline blocker, being a blocker off the ball, and then obviously being a, a route runner, you know, getting the ball in his hands. You know, I think, I think Syracuse Nation saw what he can do you know, as a, when he has the ball in his hand. So uh, uh, we definitely want to, you know, try to throw the ball to the tight end. Aronde is a tight end for us. Um, you know, I was fortunate when I was with the Carolina Panthers, I had Tremble's brother there. And I think he's going to end up being the same, you know, develop into that same type of player. You know, we got Elijah Washington. Uh, uh, I mean, we got, we, we're going to have some really good players at the tight end position. And we definitely want to try to get them involved in, in the passing game more. Obviously, all of this, right, is is contingent on all these guys staying healthy, which has been a problem for Syracuse in the past. I guess just do you feel like as of right now, like you and the rest of the staff have managed to address kind of the, the depth concerns and and are getting them in a program where these guys are going to be able to stay healthy for a full three months this fall or as healthy as possible, I guess? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think our, our uh, strength and conditioning staff, they are doing a phenomenal job. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. And I think that's gonna, that's gonna be extremely uh, helpful for us throughout the season, you know, with, with our players, as far as them being conditioned and being strong and being powerful and, you know, you know, being ready to go. I think we're having a, a, a really good off season. Uh, Chad Smith, you know, who's a head of our uh, uh, strength department is doing an excellent job, you know, along with, you know, he and his staff, and our guys are working hard. I mean, they are uh, around the clock, really, you know, uh, uh, getting up early, staying late, you know, doing extra, uh, doing whatever it takes to be, you know, the best condition, you know, strongest team out there. Uh, uh, you know, hopefully one of the, you know, the best condition teams in the ACC this year. Jeff, we've heard so much about the word recruiting since Fran stepped in. His reputation speaks for itself. Nick Williams, Coach E. Rob, I mean, it goes up and down the list. How about you and, and your recruiting philosophy and, and what you're going to be focusing on in terms of where you're going to be recruiting for Syracuse? I, was, I think I think recruiting is all about just uh, developing relationships. And Fran, Fran uh, Coach Brown, I mean, he's done a phenomenal throughout his career just developing relationships with 
uh, uh, people everywhere he's been. Uh, you know, he's a great recruiter, uh, and it's and it rubs off on our staff. You know, uh, you know, so we're we're trying to you know develop relationships, especially within the the, uh, the five closest states here to to New York. You know, we're you know we're we're going out within a five six hour radius. You know, trying to make sure we contact every coach, leave no stone unturned uh, uh, in our local area here, what we consider our local area. So. Uh, but we will, we will national fruit, you know, we'll, we'll be in Florida. We'll be in a little bit in, 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 in Texas, a little bit in Ohio, uh, a little bit in Georgia, you know, where we have some coaching ties, uh, you know, from some of those states. So uh, uh, we're going to recruit. I mean, that's the name of the game in college football. You know, you got to be able to bring in great talent and, you know, we're going to do a great job of evaluating, uh, uh, making sure we, we bring in the right, uh, student athletes and the right young men into our program that fit what we want to do uh, both off the field and on the field. And uh, I think we were off to a good start with our first recruiting class this year. Brent and I had to throw this one in here at the end. It's not quite Syracuse football related, but Tommy DeVito, obviously a big storyline for the <laughs> yeah. Giants this fall. And he is a Syracuse guy. He played a That's couple right. seasons. I told him that. I told him that. I said, you still claim Syracuse now. I said, I told him, I come up here. You're still welcome. Anytime you're, you're going to come up here. Him and just him and uh, Justin Pugh, I told him they're both, mm. they both better be up here uh, uh, you know, before the start of the season. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, just did, did either of them just give you any advice or restaurant recommendations or just tell you anything about the area? And what was it like seeing kind of Tommy have that, that moment of fame that he had this season? They all recommended uh, all American. Uh, pizza, mm. uh, uh, pizza. I have not gotten a chance to be there yet, so but I will, you know, for sure. Uh, they both love Syracuse. Uh, said nothing but uh, great things. I know Justin's really involved, uh, you know, still with you know with with the university. Uh, uh, but Tommy, man, it was great to see him have such a great year this year. And uh, I remind he's such a good kid. I reminded him every week, man. I said you're still. Especially when I took the job, I was like, and you're still part of Syracuse family. I don't want to hear anything about Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're still a Syracuse quarterback. So, uh, now it was a pleasure getting to know those guys, you know, this year, you know, working with the Giants. And Jeff, last thing from uh, us here, uh, you mentioned being a part of the community here. I'm sure you've had your nose to the grindstone and getting everything ready, but, you know, just what's been maybe uh, two or three things that you've really enjoyed since being here and settling in and getting to know the Syracuse community a little bit? I've really enjoyed going to the basketball games. You know, we got a chance to, uh, I'm a, I was a huge uh, Big East, old Big East basketball fan. And, you know, obviously Syracuse, you know, with Ron Cycli and Coleman and I mean, all the great players they, they, they had back in the day. I grew up watching, watching those guys battle against Georgetown and St. John's and you know, all the different, all the different teams. So that's been really exciting. Uh, to be able to go into uh, 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 the stadium and watch, you know, watch basketball, uh, I think it's been really exciting getting to know the getting to know the city. You know, uh, you know, as we take recruits around, I actually live right downtown, so it's been good, you know, just to get the chance to, you know, get out and go to some of the restaurants, dinosaur barbecue. I was excellent. <laughs> Man, I've probably been there about five times already. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so just learning. I mean, just learning the local. Uh, spots uh, uh, has 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 been really good, and then the administration has just been really supportive of our new staff. I mean, that really stands out. I mean, it really does. Uh, they've been really supportive, and you know, everybody is you know trying to do whatever it uh, you know it takes for us to be successful. Uh, you know, things that we're asking for that we need. You know, uh, you know, I feel that um, people are really have been really receptive to. You know some of the things that, that that we need to be successful, and we just feel like we have a lot of support here at Syracuse. Well, Jeff, I can tell you this has been, and Emily can concur, an, an off season unlike any we've seen. People just have the fever; they can't get enough Syracuse football. We're looking forward to seeing how this goes forward, and we're only two months away from the spring game and spring football, of course, coming up. So a lot uh, to get into, but we really appreciate you uh, coming on today and, and giving us your time and uh, look forward to catching up again. But uh, thanks for hopping on Syracuse sports with us today, my friend. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Brent and Emily, like I said, it's been, it's been a pleasure. And like I said, really excited to be here and uh, look forward to uh, uh, coming on again soon.